Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be discussing a problem that most new coin dealers get into when they're going to long distance shows. This has to do with the quote unquote 10% rule um, that most people want coin dealers to abide by. But let's get this video started. The main problem that most new coin dealers run into, especially at long distance coin shows, is that they buy every single thing that they can if they can make 10% on it. And that is okay in some circumstances. Some coins move fast, some coins um, are in, in high demand, and that is what's required. Um, but what I've realized um, based on this show and based on many shows in the past is that if you buy coins that only make you 10%, it's not going to sustain your business, but it also isn't really going to even cover costs of the show. And most people talk about that and they say, you know, hey, you shouldn't make 10%. And we're going to be addressing that also in this video. So where most people that are collectors and new dealers go wrong is that they start to tell themselves that this isn't a business. And I call it the coin hobby, but really, in the end of the day, it's called the coin business. People get up because they have to push a business, they have to find great coins, they have to please their customers. All of that really is business practices that we have to uh, follow and do every day and uh, do a lot of things ethically. And so when someone says it's a coin hobby and you're supposed to do it as a coin hobby, yes, that's important. But for a coin business perspective, you have to make it profitable. You have to continuously every day find ways to cut costs, um, find coins for the best price. And a lot of that has to do with just uh, being at the right place at the right time. And at this Mississippi show, we actually had you know, around $650 in cost. And so when you're actually at a show, you really shouldn't be buying everything at 10%. Um, you really should be looking for coins that make you 20, 30, 40%. And the reason being is because you have to really cover those upfront costs. Um, and I knew that during the second day of the coin show, when we were walking around, and I'm like, we're at least having $600 in costs on this show. How are we going to make it happen? How are we going to cover these costs, but also when we get home, make the money that we need to uh, carry on the month and meet the quotas that we really want to achieve as a business? And so I think what is a problem in, in the coin space for sure is that people say you shouldn't be making or you should only be making 10% on a coin. And I unequivocally think that's false. I think that there's plenty of opportunities out there where people don't want coins a part of their uh, and part of their inventory anymore or there's dealers that want to cut you deals or there's people that say, you know what, I'll, if you want to sell this coin to me 10% on a gray sheet, okay. Um, but there's a really big issue that I see in the space and that's the reason why I'm talking to you today about it that people only want you to make 10% and if you make over that then you're considered an unethical dealer. And I think that's I think that's by and far uh, just a real big problem because we really make about 20% on our coins. And 20% at this at this scale of our business really uh, allows us to uh, reach out to more people, buy more coins, get things turning quickly. Um, and the more profitable that you are, the, the easier it is for you to be able to scale it, maybe get an employee one day, maybe get a storefront. All that stuff is something that we want on the horizon, be able to save money. A lot of things like that really can't be achieved with 10%. Um, and so for the people out there that want to say that you only need to make 10%, let's talk about the things that you use on a daily basis or the things that you use um, and special events. So we looked up a few things, um, and Starbucks, their profit margins, so for every 60 cents they put into a coffee, they make around $4 back. So they're making about seven times on their money every time you get a Starbucks. Uh, Gucci, if, you, if anyone collects Gucci, but I don't think anyone does in this space, but we're gonna talk about collectibles and just high-end stuff. 70%, um, they make about 70% um, on every single purchase that they make. Um, and so uh, Rolexes are kind of a little bit lower, they're about 40%. And uh, we're looking at certain handbags, Hermes uh, handbags, they make around 41%. And uh, we looked also at K Jewelers, what they made. 
in their store, they made about 37% uh, profit margin in person. And so when we look at all these different spaces and we say only coin dealers should only be able to make 10%, I get that our that our space is more structured, but at the same time, a lot of these places are able to grow because of the profit margin, because they're profitable, because they make more money, and uh, uh, I just don't think that it's, uh, you know, people can't be doing stuff for free, people can't be doing stuff for 10%. A lot of this stuff has to come from a place of maybe making 20%, like we were talking about, and uh, this only doesn't have to come from the, the end of finding coins for a cheap price, but also cutting costs. And so we're trying to work on that with buying the car that we got, with also the supplies we buy, and also, you know, making sure everything's secure, but also, you know, not paying too much in terms of uh, shipping costs and everything else. And so uh, I wanted to dismantle that 10% uh, theory and 10% kind of opinion, because uh, it's just an important thing we should be talking about. But Let's talk a little bit about some coins. We're going to show you guys some coins and what we paid for them and what the market value of them are. And those coins are actually bought because we want to cover the cost of the show. And then past that, we're going to be trying to find coins that uh, make us a good profit on top, but also are really nice and beautiful pieces. So let's cut to those coins and then we'll come back for a conclusion. Alrighty guys. So since we were talking about, you know, just the way you should move around a coin show, the way you should understand what, what your capital can do. We're going to be talking a little bit about what we paid for some of these coins today. So you guys have a little bit of an understanding of sometimes you just got to wait for the right coin to arrive. And that will sometimes get you more than 10% on a coin. The first coin I want to show you is this beautiful 1866 Proof 3 Cent Silver. This one's got like a almost a purple and green terminal toning to it. And the thing about this coin is the mirrors are really nice. But the thing that holds most of these coins back from Cameo is just the lights kind of touches and, and spots that you can see on a coin. So you're going to see a few little spots right underneath America there, uh, right next to the star also. It's just a few things like that really hold it back from getting any better than just a normal proof. And that's unfortunate, but still, I mean, the coin overall, I like the just the, just the proofy feel to it, the nice kind of, uh, I don't know, liquid feels that this coin has. Don't see too many of these that often, and so even a business strike, business strike uh, mintage is around twenty-two thousand. So anything with the sixty-six on it is really good, especially for a three-cent silver. Thank you guys for watching this video so far. If you guys did enjoy it uh, or are enjoying it, please leave a like. Uh, we also want you to comment based on the principles that we've been talking about. What are you guys seeing at coin shows? What are you guys seeing in terms of your profit margins? If you are a new and up-and-coming coin dealer and uh, subscribe if you're new, but I won't take up any more of your time. Let's get back to some coins. So let's talk to you guys about something that we did good on. And uh, so we came up to a, a booth, and this 1930, 25 cent, uh, you know, Stanley Liberty Quarter, AU50, eight, it was priced for $100. And if you guys look at the current comps of these coins, you're gonna see that one of these coins uh, just sold for around $175 or $160 or $150. So making more than 10% on a coin is possible as long as you have the capital around the end of the show or when new dealers come in to buy something like this. And uh, you know, someone says, why do you, why would you, uh, you know, why would you make more than 10%? How dare you? Um, everybody else in that show would have made more than 10%. If you were at that show, you had made more than 10% and never told a soul. So uh, sometimes there's a cost of driving all the way to Mississippi, getting that stuff and bringing it back. It does come at a cost to us. Our time is valuable and our effort is valuable. And so that sometimes is what's going to happen with, uh, you know, you're just finding good deals. But up next is 1886 uh, Morgan Dollar. This one's a Battle Creek collection coin. And uh, the, the colors on this coin are really beautiful. I like the just the wraparound crescent that you see on this coin. It, it's got an older holder, a little scratched up as you can see, but just a tough pedigree to find, especially in Gem State, and so that's why we picked this coin up. And it is a, it received star, you know, a star grade for its eye appeal. Really nice, beautiful piece, and so glad to have some variety. You know, we've been moving a lot into just normal normal coins, but sometimes we want to go back to our roots and buy a lot of tone coins, and that's just uh, you know the name of the game. Uh, up next is this 1873 gold dollar. It's an open three, 
And I like this coin because I've been moving in the gold dollars a lot. And I don't know, I think this coin just really had some decent eye appeal. I don't know if it's been the CAC or not, but I like the, the obverse design of this coin. That's why we picked it up. And like I said, when we're trying to move into new series or new, new things like gold, we try to find something that we are interested in. And gold dollars really do that for me. And, uh, you know, it's just something that's going to sit in our shop. And uh, when someone comes along, maybe with a, a want list, they'll pick it up. And, uh, you know, it'll give them some give them some uh, interest, but also maybe get a new client. And the reason why we buy a lot of bigger coins, kind of like this one and this one, is because, like we were talking about in a few videos back, the premium sometimes, even if it's 10%, is a decent amount. It could be $100, it could be $150 or more. And when you start to make, you know, distances between... Uh, what you paid for a coin and what you sell it for, like 10, 20, 30%, that can really start to add up fast and that can make what you're doing a lot easier and uh, you can start to scale and do more with your business. Here's a few uh, Lincoln cents that we bought from the show. 1909S Lincoln cent, great MS64 red brown. I like the skin on this coin. Not a fan of that little spot right there on his jacket, but uh, there, the thing that kind of kept this thing brown is just those few spots on the reverse here. Um, they just didn't like that at all, I'm sure. But the luster is still nice, and the coin is a little bit of a tougher date, as you know. And these ones aren't too expensive just because they are missing the VDB, but I do like this one a lot. But the one that I really love, the one that I'm really ecstatic about that I found, was this 1909S uh, MS63 Brown. The reason why I like this coin so much is because it has a really intense wood grain uh, feel to the coin on the obverse and it is in this old NGC holder and man I, I love this coin so much I, I wish I could keep it and uh, maybe I might I might keep it I'm not too sure but just the just the surfaces on the obverse really really got me in my attention um, and so we ended up buying this coin for a really good price you know make we can make 20 25 percent on this coin just because uh, you know there's certain dealers that like certain things that want to sell them this guy had probably a few hundred Morgan dollars, and then when you go all the way to the end uh, of his table, there's just one little case left with just extra coins, and we ended up buying these two from him, and he didn't want too much for them, and he didn't even want to look up the price. So um, you can get uh, the right coins from different dealers. It just depends on what they like also and what they just want to get rid of. Here's 1865 Civil War, uh, two, cent sil uh, two cent, I'm sorry, two cent piece. So it's MS64 Brown. Really uh, deep brown on this coin. Sadly, there's uh, not a lot of red left in it, but that's just the name of the game on these. I'm glad I bought it in the 60 to 65 uh, date, just because it's a little bit more desirable, a little bit more sought after, and the guy didn't want too much for it. And so, you know, this is a little bit towards the end of the show. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about what we paid for this coin. So this one right here, uh, I think, you know, he had 189 on it, but I think he reduced it to 170. And a lot of these in 64 brown are selling for $300 or more. And so if you guys can get, keep your eye out spot, out, uh, spot out and look for coins that you might want or your collectors might want, you can make the trip worthwhile. And once again, I don't think it's right to demonize anybody for making more than 10%, making more than 15% on a coin. Because at the end of the day, like I said, people are driving all the way there. They're spending their hard earned time and money and uh, they're wanting to find, find the best coins for their collectors for the best price. And, you know, I don't see anybody complaining at the car shop when they have to pay, when, when they're making 50% over on you, or when you're at the coffee shop and they're making 90% over on you. So, uh, it's just something to understand, and it's a little bit confusing sometimes with coins, why there's that such uh, issue with them, but uh, maybe we can get over that stigma one day. Here's 1856, three cents silver, great AE53. A little cleany on the coin for sure, but it was an affordable price and not many of these sold um, in the past. And so we ended up picking it up. Kind of this ugly sticker I have to remove off the back. Maybe we can figure that out with some goo gone. But, uh, you know, a nice little tight piece for sure. Uh, one of my favorites uh, also from the show is just a nice 1914D uh, Lincoln scent. The reason why I like this coin so much is because the dealer that sold it to me is really nice. Met him first in Bossier City. And then we ended up meeting uh, again here at uh, at the Mississippi show. And it's a, uh, there's a few distracting spots on the reverse here, but overall still a decent coin. A little bit of a tougher date for sure. 1914D is, a, is something that you definitely want in your collection if you're a Lincoln guy. 
Here's a sad story on this one. So I bought this 1956 uh, Franklin half dollar. It is proof 66 CAC. It's a nice coin, but I thought it was a type one instead of a type two. The guy marked it for a price of a type two, but it only is a type one. Um, if you guys want to look up what a type one and type two is, uh, you'll be able to see it. But yeah, I got probably hosed and lost $100 on this coin. So you win and you lose some, especially when you're a dealer. And uh, that's just the name of the game. But my two last favorite coins of this video is a 1884-0 MS65 Dimple. The reason why I like this coin is just because, uh, you know, I don't buy too many O Dimples that often, but the luster on this coin is very strong. And uh, as you guys know, they just didn't clean the, uh, the dies too often. They didn't, uh, didn't take care of them too well at the O Mint. And you're not going to see too many dimples nowadays, especially very frosty dimples. So you can see that this one's not a 1881S dimple. This one is a New Orleans dimple, which means there's going to be less kind of uh, distinction between the details and the fields. And that's just something that's very common. And uh, it's something that a new collector should understand, especially with uh, a series, uh, you know, especially with the, just the different things that happen to different mints. And uh, that's something I learned a little bit a while ago, but it's something that I should definitely pass on. Here's the 1895S Morgan Dollar. The reason why I bought this coin is because it was nice, original, and it's an easier sell, especially in the condition that it's in because it is affordable, but it also is a nice, you know, circulated, beautiful cameo. I do like that one a lot. And some stuff in this in this lot, I, I make sometimes less than 10% on it. And why do you ask that? Because um, why would you ask a question of, you know, why would you even get le less than 10%? It's because a lot of these coins... Um, I can do pretty well with. I can sell them before I even get home. I have a lot of uh, dealers that would pay a lot of money for them. And so sometimes getting less than 10% in terms of uh, a premium for a coin uh, happens just because there's a lot of uh, dealers that like them and they're really hot in the market. So to end this video, we bought a few uh, more Lincolns. As you can see, he discounted them 20%. Got a few small letter, small letter uh, uh, Flying Eagle cents here. But a lot of these coins, as you can see, I mean, are pretty decent shape. Let me pick one up for you. 1909S Lincoln. I mean, this one's probably a VF, low VF, maybe a, a fine. And a lot of these are selling for around 100 bucks. So uh, this was actually our absolute last buy of the show. We bought these at the end. And a lot of the condition on these were really strong, really nice. And so can you really discount me for going in and scooping up deals like this? Um, the only difference between me and a dealer that wouldn't tell you what they paid is that I'm willing to be honest sometimes and share with you uh, how I feel about the market, what I do at coin shows, and what the same you know collector or dealer would do if they were in my shoes. They would buy all these coins in a heartbeat. And uh, but in this video, I'm sh I'm sharing with you what I paid because I think there's a premium out there for you if you want to start hunting coin shows, if you want to start getting into the coin business, and. I don't discount you. I will never discount you for getting a good price on a coin. So I want to say a few things that, that are important, especially for this episode. I think making money is uh, in the coin space is supposed to be ethical and supposed to be correct. And like I said before, the main ways that you can go around a coin show and make sure that your costs are covered is that you, uh, one, don't spend all the money that you have up front on uh, the coins that will make you 10%. Look for the ones that will make you a little bit more because you're going to have to cover those costs. And you're also just going to have to uh, further the business, save some money, or put some coins back. And all of those things really can be achieved with the more amount of money and profit that you make. And so... Uh, you know, in the ways of being ethical, in the way of this conversation, we're not talking about stealing, uh, you know, 50% away from an old grandma that comes to your shop. We're not talking about taking advantage of someone that doesn't know anything in this space. I'm talking about people that are coin dealers that have been coin dealers for 20 years and say, hey, I just have no interest for this, or hey, I want this coin at gray sheet, or hey, I want this coin 10% back a bid. It doesn't matter to me. You should, If you want it, you can have it. Uh, a lot of those things... Uh, you can work with a lot of those things you can uh, be in those parameters of when you're at a coin show and you don't have to take advantage of anybody. They bought the coin for a certain price and they want to sell it for a certain price. Nothing of that, in my opinion, is unethical and there's still plenty of room in there to make 10, 20, 30% on a coin 
And that's just what we did on one of the coins. And one of the coins that we ended up selling ended up covering all the costs of our show. And so use this um, information to, you know, do better at coin shows, find coins that you like for your customers and for you. And that will really help you sustain your business. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts on the 10% rule. And if it's not 10% that you should make, what should you make? What percentage should you aim for as a business, especially in the coin space? And subscribe if you're new. Uh, we're almost at 2,400 subscribers. And it would be nice to hit that 2,500 soon. But yeah, we will see you guys in the next video.